Senator Bernie Sanders already has one edge over his 2020 rivals. According to the campaign, Sanders brought in $10 million in less than a week since launching his run. The total came from reportedly about 360,000 donors. Of those, the campaign says nearly 12,000 are Republicans. Sanders is far outpacing other presidential hopefuls, including fellow progressive candidate Elizabeth Warren. The senator previously vowed not to take PAC or lobbyist money, but she went a step further Monday. In a message to supporters, Warren pledged to not hold fundraisers or even get on the phone with wealthy donors, adding she's, quote, not for sale to people who can write big checks. To discuss, let's bring in CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns. Hi, Caitlin. Great to see you. Um, so, you know, when Sanders announced his campaign, he acknowledged that a lot of his policies were being adopted by other 2020 contenders. But he is known to be one of the more progressive Democrats out there. Well, mm -hmm. not a Democrat, an independent, but more progressive running for that spot. How is it that Republicans are starting to contribute to his campaign? Well, we did see in 2016 that there was potential for crossover support for Bernie Sanders. I remember talking to a lot of folks at Trump rallies who said that they also really liked Bernie. So he did have that uh, crossover support there. So this could be some of that. It could be Republicans who don't like Trump, but they more identify with, with Bernie Sanders because he had a lot of the same uh, policy initiatives on trade and on other items that Trump had. What's really interesting, though, is that when Bernie Sanders announced, there was this big question about whether he could expand upon his 2016 race or whether time had kind of passed him by and other candidates were carrying on the mantle of Sanders in terms of policy. But with these fundraising totals, we're seeing that he not only has kept up his support in terms of grassroots fundraising, but he's also expanded upon it. And the New York Times did an analysis of these uh, donations and found that nearly 39 percent, according to the campaign, Campaign were from new email addresses. So that means mm. that suggests that he's bringing in new people to this campaign, which is a really important kind of moment for him. And then on the other hand, you have Warren, whose strategy is now to not accept sort of mm -hmm. money from big donors. Do you think that that's a strategy that's coming out of necessity because she can't keep pace with Sanders? Or do you think yeah. it's a genuine attempt to appeal to those voters who don't want to support a candidate who's getting corporate money. Right. Well, I think it's actually a little bit of both. So if you see uh, Warren's fundraising emails, she has noted that they're lagging behind in their goals and that they need to kind of keep up pace uh, with what it takes to run a presidential campaign. So a lot of it is that. But a lot of her message is this rejection of corporate money, this uh, accountability campaign, really, and this economic fairness message. And so this really fits neatly into that by saying, look, I'm not going to spend time courting high dollar donors. I want this campaign to be about you, the people. Now, what it also does is it not only helps to create momentum or to build and make that message appealing, it also provides her some cover in right. case she isn't able to keep up fundraising totals and is lagging behind in fundraising. She can then say, well, that's because I'm not taking these high dollar donors. And since they are both considered to occupy somewhat of the same progressive uh, arm, mm -hmm. do you think that that this could then sense, be something that separates them? I mean, their, their theory on campaign finance? Right. Well, Bernie Sanders had made it his goal in 2016 and really shattered some records by focusing on the grassroots fundraising, uh, was very successful of that. And what that does is it enables a campaign to build an email list, to uh, create a voter database and be able to target voters. And it also allows them to go back to these donors, these grassroots funding, and get more money. Because right. if you're only giving about $27 is the average contribution, according to Sanders' campaign, you can go back and solicit those people for more money. Right. Uh, Elizabeth Warren is doing this partly out of necessity, partly out of a political message that she wants to send. Uh, but she has been kind of establishing a fault line in the Democratic Party. Remember, when she announced, she said that she wasn't going to take any corporate PAC money. And that is now kind of the standard uh, standard for entry for any Democratic candidate. Explain, if you will, this crossover mm -hmm. appeal that Sanders seems to have that I guess Warren mm -hmm. is not quite sharing. You've yeah. been on the ground talking to voters. Who yeah. are these Republicans? Are they sort of Reagan Democrats? Well, it's really interesting when you think about someone like Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders, you kind of identify them with the left. And right. Even, uh, 
you know, Trump has been going after them for, you know, calling them uh, socialists and the, those sorts of things. Uh, what's interesting about Warren, though, is that her economic message uh, sometimes has a lot of similarities to Trump. She talks a lot about how when she was growing up, it was easier to get into the middle class. You could raise a family on the minimum wage. And I will say that a lot of voters that I talked to in Iowa specifically, that message really resonated with people. Mm -hmm. I talked to people who said that this kind of reminds them of, of how they grew up. And so, you so think there is a little bit of that nostalgia there. So and, you think both Warren and Sanders and this, might have crossover appeal? But, but potentially, yeah. and we'll have to see. I mean, this is a Democratic primary, so mm -hmm. they're really courting Democratic voters. But, you know, in some places, uh, the uh, voters really want to see someone who's electable and they make this part of their electability pitch. I think a lot of times about the, the union worker who maybe culturally mm -hmm. supported Donald Trump but maybe right. economically is more in line with a Sanders or a Warren platform. Right, that's right. All right, mm -hmm. Caitlin Huey Burns, thank you so much for coming thank to you. see us.